You don't usually think of a prison as a vacation destination, especially one like Brushy Mountain State Prison. For more than a century, the worst of the worst criminals were sent there. But of course, it was closed in 2009. Now it's reopened, not for inmates, but for tourists. Rob Wiles took a look at this once infamous lockup. All Brian May knew about prisons was that he had no desire to go to one. Then he got his first look at Brushy Mountain. The first thing that strikes you when you come around the bend and you see it for the first time is this almost castle-like structure, but then it's surrounded by Frozen Head State Park and these mountains that look like they spring up from out of the prison. And it's really difficult to describe until you see it for the first time. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And that's something that we felt like should be seen by as many people as possible. So Brian and his company decided to reopen the prison as a tourist attraction, which includes a museum containing uh, some unusual artifacts. There's a Bible right here where they've cut the inside out to hide some homemade needle stuff and a, and a homemade weapon and find it interesting that they decided to use Proverbs 10:7 as one of their marking points for the cutout. The memory of the just is blessed and the name of the wicked shall rot. It's pretty interesting. That is interesting, <laughs> kind of ironic. Yeah, yeah. It's ironic too about the Tennessee code here, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's some cutout Tennessee code here uh, out of a book that holds some drug paraphernalia and uh, right and right eight, above the robbery section. Yeah, right above the robbery <laughs> section, which is kind of fitting for this place. The museum has plenty to show. By the time the prison closed in 2009, administrators had collected many artifacts and confiscated even more. When I say we have three or four hundred weapons that were made by prisoners, we have three or four hundred weapons made by prisoners. They kept everything, tubs and tubs and tubs of shanks and shivs and knives and random you know, weapons made out of everything from toothbrushes to parts of beds. You'll see photographs of James Earl Ray when, and during his booking process. We've got all the files for him. You'll see log books that go back to the early 1900s, boots and uniforms and hats. And if you can think of it, and it was in this prison over the years, we have it. There's a restaurant here, and the old exercise yard is now a concert venue. What they would do is you was given one bucket to use the bathroom in, and you was given a bucket of water. And when they put you in that cell and closed that door, that's what you had. What makes the place really interesting is the tour guides, former guards like William Harvey, and inmates too, like Wayne Davidson, a convicted burglar who first got a taste of the harshness of this prison in 1969. I remember saying to my cellmate, once the man gets out of here, they ought to kill him if he comes back to prison. Six months later, after getting out, I was in Georgia doing a seven-year sentence in the, in the Max Security Prison down there. Wayne spent a total of 32 years in prisons, a big hunk of it at Brushy Mountain. He has vivid memories of the place, going back to the very first meal he was having in the chow hall. All at once, this guy jumped up with a knife, threatening officers and inmates. You want to kill them all. Well, I'm, I'm scared. I'm thinking he's a tough guy. And I asked my cellmate, I said, what's going on? He said, just be quiet. I'll tell you when we get in. So later on, he told me what the term check-in in, in, in prison meant. That means an inmate was scared. He does things on purpose just to get locked up. When you see an inmate do that in front of an officer, he's asking for help. Different views of this place were the most dangerous and most notorious criminals went. Criminals like James Earl Ray, who murdered Martin Luther King. The tour guides are all part of the story of the place, like Deborah Williams, who came here to an all-male prison in 1980. The inmates were very respectful. They were just glad to have a young female back here that they could speak to. A lot of the ones that didn't get visits from family and so forth, they were just happy to have a female back here. My big challenge was being accepted by the other officers. Of course, this being a maximum security prison at that time and all the violence that was going on, they felt like it was putting their lives in danger and my life in danger by being back here. 
Of course, Wayne Davidson, who was imprisoned here for many years, has his own view of brushy. This here probably was one of the harshest prisons I've ever been in, but the guards did run this prison. Guards had control of this prison. That made it a little bit safe because really inmates want the guards to, to be in charge of the prison. They're not gonna tell them that, but if you got out of line here, they would straighten you up. Whatever side of the bars they were on before, prisoners and guards are glad they're getting to share Brushy Mountain's history, good and bad, with visitors eager to get a glimpse behind the wall. People are interested in the history of this place, both the atrocities and the good things that happened here, because I like to tell people a lot of the times, a prison mirrors society. Um, it's just that all the good things, all the bad things, all the secrets, everything you can think of that happens out in society happens here, but it happens in a very, very small, confined environment. You know, there's a lot of good about Brushy. There's some black with Brushy, but you know, there's a lot of red with it too. This prison had a purpose, and good or bad, what happened here, it served its purpose, what it was meant to do. Remembering being enclosed with the worst of the worst Tennessee criminals brings back a nostalgic feeling to William Harvey. It was like a brotherhood. Whether they liked you or disliked you, they took care of you. If you had a fight on the yard and you was attacked, they'd come running. I mean, drones, I mean, they, you never, had you, you never had to worry about yourself. Somebody always had you back. For Wayne Davidson, being back here, telling the stories of his life at Brushy Mountain is, well, it's therapeutic. And I remember I used to have dreams every, every, at least twice a week. I'd have nightmares. But since I've started working here, it's sort of like counseling, just being here and talking to people and telling my story. And uh, I haven't had a nightmare yet. Some of the stories Wayne and the other guides tell may at times disturb the sleep of the visitors who are flocking here. But Brushy Mountain was a prison for better or worse. Now it has a reprieve, a pardon, if you will, and the chance to serve as a reminder of the history of its notorious past.